On the Thursday edition of Locked On Grizzlies, it's a trade Thursday. We are looking at ways that the Memphis Grizzlies can move around, up, down, and even out of the NBA draft. Second round picks, first round picks. And why do we need to watch everybody else have fun trading away stars like Trey Young and Brandon Ingram? I want to get in on the fun too, DeMichael, and that's exactly what we're going to do on this episode of Locked On Grizzlies. Let's jump in. Let's lock in, shall we? You are Locked On Grizzlies, your daily Memphis Grizzlies podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, it is Locked On Grizzlies, not to be confused with the newly minted Locked On Government. Uh, Shout out to my AP (laughs) government students who very clearly uh, made a discovery. I shared on social media uh, to Michael, my wonderful co-host, Michael Cole, here with me on this Thursday edition. I shared with you and Nick Angstad, our boss, and you know, shared on social media. Uh, I'm a teacher by trade, and I did a podcast project with my students as the school year comes to a close. And a couple of times they, they called their shows Locked On Government. And even in one case, they blatantly stole the Locked On logo. Uh, I'm surprised David Locke's not going to sue them for copyright infringement. But if you're listening to this, dear students, hello. Hopefully uh, you guys are having a good day. And I'm so glad that you're learning more about the Memphis Grizzlies, uh, Googling your teacher. That's great. Excellent um, idea. You know, yeah. To, it's to a, students, if you're listening, excellent way to get, uh, yeah. you know, uh, Mr. Mullinex uh, on your side over there. Uh, that, that I think I think the idea helps your grade, but that's just my opinion. Coach Mullinax is what I go by. I'm one of the old school. I'm the football coach. Oh, yeah. You're going gonna, gonna to call me Coach Mullinax. Coach but Mullinax, a, yeah. A few still hit me with mister, and they're like, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be disrespectful. And I'm like, just relax. It's not that serious. <laughs> uh, anyway, welcome to another episode of Lockdown Grizzlies. Hopefully you are on every day or at this point, every time an episode drops. Michael and I, I believe, partner, we are every day in the month of May so far. Every day. Episode drop, and that will continue tomorrow. Uh, we'll talk more about tomorrow's show. You'll be going solo for that program. Uh, but we're going to have another full week here, and we're going to keep trying to keep this energy going. Uh, Memorial Day, we're going to take a day off, spoiler alert, but that's still a ways away. Yeah. Uh, and Michael and I are happy to keep grinding forth with you here on Lockdown Grizzlies. Like, comment, rate, review, subscribe, wherever you get your podcasts. Check us out. YouTube, Amazon, Spotify, Apple. We are proud members, again, of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team, each and every day. And to Michael and I, you know, it was another good day on YouTube. Our listens are strong on the, the audio podcast area as well. It doesn't look like May. It looks like the Grizzlies are in the playoffs right now based yep. off our numbers. So we're truly appreciative. of. I, I, told, I told you, Joe, this is like the – you said call me at Christmas for the fan uh-huh. base. I feel like this is wake me up when the draft lottery gets here. Those last two months were, were brutal. Uh, yeah, it was for, bad. For anyone, you know, I, you know how many times people said to me, like, it, like would laugh at me. I mean, it went from last season when the playoffs were around. People were like, "Oh, Michael, your job's so cool," you know. Oh you yeah, put all these games for free and all of that, and then it turned into, "Ha ha, you got to watch all these games." And we don't. <laughs> it just it flipped on me, but but you know now everyone's back to you know the exciting part of this thing where. Uh, you can kind of look forward to Grizzlies basketball and what's to come next. Your job as a beat writer is still pretty cool, even if they're they're <laughs> not as good. And, and, you know, DeMichael does a phenomenal job over the commercial appeal there in Memphis. Let's jump in with our trades here, partner. Uh, a wonderful opportunity to talk turkey with the trade machine. And I'm a big armchair GM. This is one of my favorite parts of fandom. I try to be more disciplined now, A, because, you know, it's good content to talk about my trade ideas. But every once in a while, I get one that I think I'm so brilliant on, uh, I I have to share it. And I'm going to start with my idea that I shared on X, at Joe Mullinax. See if you agree with my logic. Maybe you'd go in a different direction. I I know I'm Mr. Are We Trying to Win a Championship or Not. But That's what they call you. The trade that I suggested, all right? is this to the Brooklyn Nets who do not have a single pick in this draft. I don't believe they're mm. the only team in the NBA that is pickless. No first round pick, no second. They, round need, pick. they need some picks, man. They could use oh. some picks. So I suggested number nine overall, plus John Conchar and Zaire Williams. You'll notice a trend. Those are my two favorite guys to try to move on from <laughs> uh, in exchange for Dorian Finney Smith, which for those of you that have been following the show for a while, as DeMichael obviously has, Uh, He's going to have some questions because I'm a DFS, anti-DFS guy. Uh, But the the bigger one for me, partner, was a future 2027, excuse me, first-round pick 
because mm. the Nets have three of those. They have three future firsts, yep. and it's kind of kicking the asset can down the road. Again, assuming money is going to continue to get tight and all those things. Yeah, yeah. You're you're kind of taking this pick and just moving it down three years. Uh, that was my idea. It it gets you another veteran. I think that it keeps your flexibility, like we've talked about a lot. You want to maintain that moving forward. And I think it allows for the team to bring in a wing who can play multiple positions as versatile. It's yeah. kind of like Gigi Jackson insurance. If Gigi can't be the guy you need him to be to be a contender, you got DFS be- has a lot of experience doing it. So that's what I was thinking with number nine overall. How do you feel about that? Would you go in a different direction? I love that one. I, I, I love that one. And here's why, you know, a lot of you may be wondering, you know, if you're not just general basketball fans, this is locked on Grizzlies. Uh, how in the world do the Nets not have a pick right now? And why in the world do they have three? Great question. In the year of 2027. But uh, they did damage control, basically. So the Nets were one of those teams that went all in. Remember, they uh, they acquired Kevin Durant. They acquired Kyrie Irving. They acquired James Hart. And in the midst of acquiring all those players, they shipped out a lot of draft capital, you know, uh, to get, you know, uh, Kevin Durant, to get, you know, James Harden, you know, in particular, when James Harden requested a trade, you know, of, you know, from his previous spot, and um, which I think was Houston at the time, but when he requested a trade from Houston. So when those things happened, uh, they, they lost a lot of draft capital, and obviously it didn't work out for them. That trio barely saw the floor together, and they had to recruit some of that. So they traded, you know, for example, they traded Kevin Durant to the Suns, and now we laugh at the Suns for being in the situation that they're in. And Brooklyn has, you know, access to some of those picks and whatnot. So the thing is, here's why I think your idea is an excellent idea. Uh, one, picking up Dorian Finney, as you said, he's, he hasn't been your guy, but I've always, you know, he's a solid wing. He's a guy who can start in a pinch. You know, like think Kyle Anderson from the perspective of, you know, Kyle Anderson had a one year in particular where he started 68, 69 games with the Grizzlies. Then the next season, he started like 10, 11 games. Like he's just one of those guys where if if you lose a, you know, Jaron Jackson Jr. for 14, 15 games, uh, you're, you're not just, you know, you don't feel terrible about throwing Dorian Finney-Smith into a starting lineup. Of course, you lose some things because it's Jaron Jackson Jr. But you, you feel okay about it. Or you, you, you lose Marcus Smart for a stretch. And, you know, Vince Williams isn't around, whatever the case may be. But basically, he gives you optionality. Uh, that's one reason why I like it. Then, two, you know I've been on this this idea, uh, this mindset change that the Grizzlies are going to be uh, pin and pinching a little bit going forward. So to acquire, I-, I love the idea of the 2027 first, giving the Grizzlies the option of saying, hey, look, we know by 2027, Jaron's going to be on his next deal. Uh, I think job will either be on his next day or getting ready to sign the what probably who knows will be 400, 500 million dollars at that point in time. And then Desmond Bain, same thing. Like he, whew, you think the salary cap uh, is a problem now, by then uh, you're going to, you're going to need those assets, those first round picks uh, to really, you know, help this team kind of uh, stay afloat and, and keep these pieces together. So acquiring extra first round picks in addition to the ones that you already have, uh, control over it gives the Grizzlies more flexibility in a time where they're going to need it because they're not going to be able to just go out and get whatever free agent they want uh, in the coming years. It's not the sexiest idea, right? It's not the sexiest thing. It's not going well, and getting uh, uh, you know Demar Derozan in a sign and trade or going and acquiring Brandon Ingram, who we're going to talk more about in the next segment. But the Grizzlies roster isn't constructed that way. Like that's not realistic at this point. If if Ja, Dez, and Jaron are going to be your th- big three, you have to put complementary pieces around those guys. And I think DFS, he, he he provides malleability. He played, I think he played the center position for like 20% of the season, according to basketball reference. He played small forward about 40% of the time, played power forward 30% of the time. He could do so many different things and can utilize his game in such a unique way. He is a good veteran piece to have as a role player on a team trying to contend for a title. And again, it allows for future flexibility. You're not giving all that up just for DFS. You are acquiring another good first. And who knows? Again, there's three that they could choose from, which pick they choose. The Rockets having the third overall pick in this draft is because of the Brooklyn Nets. Like that was the Nets pick 
Man. that has been sent to Houston. So that is important to understand. You never know where these picks are going to go. I have a feeling Brooklyn didn't think it was going to be that high when they made that initial <laughs> trade. Uh, when we come back here on Locked on Grizzlies, we're going to get in on the star trade fun. I just kind of killed the lead a little bit. No, Brandon Ingram is probably not coming to Memphis, but that doesn't mean the Grizzlies can't get involved in the fun in another way. We'll talk about how coming up next here on Locked on Grizzlies. But first, this episode of Locked on Grizzlies is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die whip alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance things like superchargers roof racks exhaust kits led headlights and so much more whether into speed power or style ebay motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die you will always find exactly what you're looking for with the ebay guaranteed fit your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back with ebay motors you are burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to make your car the mvp and bring home huge wins with ebay motors keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit only available to united states customers when we come back here on lockdown grizzlies we are talking star trades and how memphis can get in on the action stick with us Welcome back to Lockdown Grizzlies. I am Joe Mullinax, joined by my co-host, Michael Cole, of the Commercial Appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee. Make sure you're following him on X if you don't already do so, at Michael C. He's a phenomenal writer, a wonderful talent. Memphis is very lucky to have him. And I guess Memphis is kind of lucky to have me. I'm, I've just been around so long now, right? Like, I'm old enough where I have people say they grew up reading my stuff. That's how old I am and yeah, how yeah, washed man. I am. So, you, um, but it's a while, man. You, you, you've earned your stripes. You, you're well, but that's one of the reasons, you know, you've got the youthful connection, you know, the, the actual – talent there in the city and i'm the old guy that yells at clouds you know it, it's a good dynamic <laughs> here on lockdown grizzlies um speaking of yelling at clouds there's nothing that i enjoy doing more than irrationally trading for stars like if i really wanted to piss people off on social media i would find a way to acquire somebody like i don't know mikhail bridges or yeah. Somebody, oh, a sign and trade with the Clippers for Paul George. Does it logically make sense at this point? No. You even had Ja come in on one of your trades before. I you did. Know. That's true. You which like one was that? Do you remember? That. Yeah. Which? Um, I honestly you, don't remember. You, you traded away a player that he was really close with. I, I I can't remember who it was, but it was someone that Ja had a really a good relationship with. with. Maybe yeah. like uh, Melton or something. Yeah, like that, yeah, but. yeah. We'll we'll circle back. Uh, to well, uh, we'll come back to it. John ja Morant's not not the biggest fan of Joe Mullinax, I think it's fair to say. Um, and that's okay. He doesn't have to be. I like star trades, but I also, in my old age now, partner, I'm trying to become more realistic, like Brandon Ingram, who's almost certainly, by all accounts, going to be moved on from by the Pelicans. And it sounds yeah. like it might be for peanuts, comparatively speaking, because yeah. they're trying to cut salary so they can re-sign a Herb Jones and guys like that, a Trey Murphy. You know, those types of players. I think they're saying Murphy's deal might look like Jaron Jackson Jr.'s in terms of value. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not going to be able to pay both him and Ingram. Trey yeah. Young has been in the rumors, right? Are the Hawks going to move on from Young? Are they going to use this number one overall pick that they've lucked into as a chance to reset? The Grizzlies aren't trading for Trey Young. They're almost certainly not trading for Brandon Ingram, but they can still get in on the fun as because of all of their flexibility, all the picks they have, the matching contracts. They could be a third team via trade. And the thing that I'm most interested in with this particular idea, DeMichael, is teams like the Pelicans that have numerous firsts in this draft. The Pelicans have both the 17th and the 21st pick in this draft, a team that oftentimes is connected to star players like a Donovan Mitchell or a Brandon Ingram is the New York yeah. Knicks, right? And the Knicks looking likely to be multiple. moving on. Yeah. Absolutely. They'll be in the Eastern Conference Finals, potentially. They have three picks in the top 38. They're not yeah. going to make all those picks. They're just not going to. But they might use some of those assets to try to get a player like Brandon Ingram. The Grizzlies could help facilitate such a move. Maybe getting into the late or the mid or early 20s. We talked about Zach Eady on yesterday's show. If Memphis wants a big and Eady's still there on the board, that makes a heck of a lot of sense, assuming that his current surge up to the end of the lottery isn't sustainable. We'll see how it goes. That's just one example. The Atlanta Hawks obviously having the number one overall pick. They don't have any other picks in this draft besides that one. 
So finding a way to help facilitate, giving them number 39 potentially, which we'll talk more about later on in the episode. You know, there's lots of ways Atlanta Mm -hmm. and New Orleans in particular, if they're truly trying to move on from their stars or at least two of their stars, Young and Ingram in this case, Memphis can be a third team facilitator because they have all their firsts. They have numerous seconds. They have numerous contracts that are matching salary type of deals. The Grizzlies are probably on speed dial if things accelerate. Yeah, uh, all those teams stand out uh, to me as just potential options in terms of the Grizzlies can kind of maneuver their way, you know, into a deal. Uh, the the first two teams that you mentioned more so, you know, when it comes to the star hunt, Trey Trey Young, uh, which we seen doesn't seem like he's going to get like a, a huge market, which is wild. I, I still think he's a really good player, all things considered. There's but, people that argue he's better than John Morant, and maybe offensively because of his range shooting, he, that they may have an yeah. argument. I wouldn't agree, but I don't yeah, think it's as crazy as either. it sounds. Yeah, but he's been to the Eastern Conference Finals, and you know he's done some good things. But uh, yeah, so so that one is one I could see the Grizzlies kind of, you know, uh, maybe throwing whether it's throwing a player in there to to salary match some things and acquiring another pick in in, in the process of that. Uh, I think one thing that me and you agree on, Joe, is the Grizzlies have too many wings at this point, and that's why we're having people probably talk. Why are we talking so much about trades right now? It's because it's going to happen. All these guys are not going to be on the roster. Uh, they're not all going to be on the roster. They're and in every wins. single draft that the Grizzlies yes. have been a part of in the Zach Kleiman era, they have made at least one trade. Exactly. This is this is not just a spitballing here. Uh, this is something that's proven in the past, and it's proven just by looking at the roster. I mean, you use your eyes, and you'll see that the Grizzlies have more forwards, more guys who play, you know, more wing players, two, three, four uh, positions than – any point of the past three seasons uh, when they've had a lot of success. And that's because of, you know, the emergence of the GGs and the emergence of the Vince Weeps, guys who are on two-way contracts who have now played them way, their ways into bigger roles. And after you've already re-signed, you know, the John Conchars and you drafted the Jake LaRavias and, I mean, Zaire Williams, it's 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 just a huge log jam. There's no way all these guys are going to be able to play. So somebody's going to have to be moved because all these guys are under contract. Uh, going into the season. So with that being said, uh, I think it's a good opportunity for the Grizzlies to say, hey, you know, um, let's throw a a salary in there, whether it's someone like Zaire Williams, you know, a a bigger salary, but a team is getting them back. They're only getting it for one season. And that's appealing, you know, to a lot of teams. We see a lot of times when when teams, you know, uh, salary match and they get rid of players, uh, the, the team that's taking that player in is only getting them for one season. Basically, see, hey, let's see if we can fix this guy. We can't fix him. No harm, no sweat. He's only here one year. See you. So uh, I like the idea of those two teams. And then even less so with the star hunting, I, I know, and in, in, I think it was yesterday's show or the show before that, going to the Knicks option. Uh, you pointed out something. The Knicks have three picks, you know, in the top 38. And to me, if we want to talk about the idea of the Grizzlies working their way back into the first round, you know, I know some uh, we have a lot of people that like Zach Eady, and, you know, we talked extensively about him yesterday and stuff like that. And, and there are a couple other players back into the first round that could be really good. That's a prime team to me. If the Grizzlies want to do that, if they say, hey, we want to get back in the first round, keep an eye on the Knicks uh, really closely because you're right. They got a lot of veteran pieces over there. They got a lot of young players like the Miles McBrides of the world that's developing. Dante DiVincenzo, uh, we, we know about the front court. You know, uh, whether it's Mitchell Robinson, Isaiah Hardenstein, whatever they do with him, uh, Julius Randle, Precious Achua, like they got a bunch of pieces uh, to work with on that team. So that is one that comes to mind to me that uh, where if the Grizzlies want to work their way back in the first round and maybe get a Zach Eady, maybe get, you know, a, a Tyler Smith, who we haven't talked much about, but I, I like him as, you know, a potential stretch forward in the Santi Aldama role. You know, you guys and your like G League Ignite guys. Yeah, Gosh, you, know. you love G League Ignite guys. <laughs> Look, look, because we get to see a lot of them. The thing about the G, this is the thing. The thing about the G League at night, guys, is they're not playing for college programs where uh, they have to basically center their games around, you know, uh, Coach Coach K's system or or Bo Ryan's Wisconsin system, or, or they're going to play, you know, for for Bruce Pearl's four out one in. When you go to G League at night, it's all about we're trying to get you ready for the league and go hoop. That's why you. I mean, Tyler Smith played his game over there. A uh, Ron Holland, he's a hooper because we, we get the what we got to witness him being a hooper. But I think G League Ignite is just it's more tailored, and obviously because of you know the reason it's here, it's more tailored 
uh, for guys being ready for the pros, whereas the college game was more about, you know, uh, winning an NCAA championship. And then, oh, and by the way, that'll go to the league and be great. Unless you're John Calipari, and we see where they got him. Got him ran out of Lexington. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, that G League Ignite, it's a real successful organization. It's going to stand the test <laughs> of time the next two weeks or however long it, it exists. Um, some other names there at the end of the first round, you know, Ryan Dunn, very limited Virginia offensively. Yeah. yeah, and I'm, I like UVA. I'm a fan of UVA. Yeah, I admit that. Is. But he, he's a great defender. He, he might be the most ready His made defensive player. In, this in the draft. combine was off the charts. Correct. Uh, mm-hmm. Tristan De Silva, he's been a very popular name. I think our old friend Sean Coleman has mentioned him a couple of times, potential three-point uh, for- combo forward, kind of yeah. like Santi Aldama. Uh, you know, there's been some people that have mentioned another UVA player, I believe Reese Beekman is his name. Yeah, um, yeah. Now, he wouldn't be at the end of the first round, but we'll talk yeah. about second round here in a moment, and maybe that's a guy that would make a lot of sense on a two-way contract. There's lots of different options in terms of these deals that they could try to target and acquire if they were to go about this route and hop on one of these star trade types of deals. So let us know in the comments whether it's the Knicks, the Hawks themselves, the Pelicans, uh, the Spurs, what maybe makes the most sense to you if Memphis wanted to go that route. But when we come back here on Lockdown Grizzlies, we'll close out the show with second round trade ideas. I've got another humdinger ready to wind up and pitch to Michael. We'll see. You You were more accepting of my Nets trade than I thought you would be. Let's see how you yeah. feel about this one with the Toronto Raptors. We'll talk about that next year on Lockdown Grizzlies. But first, you'll notice that this conversation has been analytical. We've been talking about the possibilities. It's hypothetical, but it's grounded in reality. And most importantly, we're not losing our minds on each other because this isn't Fox Sports. This isn't ESPN. This is Locked On Grizzlies, proud members of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team each and every day. And with Locked On Sports Today, the first of its kind 24-7 streaming sports channel on YouTube, you can continue to get content like this each and every episode from various Locked On podcast teams, sites, and shows, plus the overall leagues themselves like Locked On NBA. It has remarkable analysis for you each and every minute of every day. Again, a 24-7 streaming channel on sports on youtube and it's also on amazon fire tv under the free channels app so make sure you're checking on checking out locked on sports today right now this episode of locked on grizzlies is brought to you by better help we all carry burdens right that's an important thing to understand i have baggage to michael has baggage we all have baggage and when we keep things bottled up these things that we carry it can affect us negatively therapy is a safe space to get things off of your chest and figure out how to work through whatever is weighing you down in life. If you're thinking of starting therapy, you should certainly give BetterHelp a try. It helps you learn positive coping skills, how to set boundaries, and empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You fill out a brief questionnaire, you get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Get it off your chest with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash LockedOnNBA. When we come back, we're talking how to get the second round pick out of Memphis. Pick number uh, 39, or uh, yeah, 39, pick number 37. The Grizzlies have some picks possible to move. How can they move on from them? We'll talk about it next. Stick with us. Welcome back to Lockdown Grizzlies. I am Joe Mullinax, joined by my wonderful co-host, Michael Cole, the commercial appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee. He's an award-winning beat writer for that publication, covering the Memphis Grizzlies. Make sure you're following him on X at Michael C. You can follow me on X at Joe Mullinax. Partner, it's been a fun show, getting in on the trade fun. Usually, uh, you're a little bit harder on me with my armchair GM shenanigans. Okay. But when, been- when you write them with you, Joe, when, when, when you write them with you. You've been fairly accepting so far, and, and I, I worry that I'm risking my good energy here, but I'm, I'm going to put one more out there. And again, I already shared this on X, uh, but it's an, a trade idea with the number 39 pick. And okay. this could still be a valuable selection, right? I believe Nikola Jokic, who's pretty clearly the best player in the NBA yeah. right Taco now. Taco Bell commercial. Um, yeah, he got drafted <laughs> during a Taco Bell commercial in the second round of his draft. Uh, so it could be a pretty good player. Uh, this pick... Plus, again, the usual John Conjar, Zaire Williams combo, the cocktail. Uh, so this is assuming the prior trade that I mentioned earlier in the show doesn't happen. Uh, you're sending that out plus 39 in exchange for one Kelly Olenek, a six foot eleven center 
currently of the Toronto Raptors. Obviously, Memphis has the uh, connection with the current Raptors head coach. That might help things. Maybe they, he believes in, in all his developmental glory that he can restore Zaire Williams to brilliance. John Conchar can eat some minutes on a rebuilding team. And in exchange, the Grizzlies bring in Olenek, who probably wouldn't start in this scenario, but would be your de facto sixth man big, playing about 20 minutes or so off the bench, provides great spacing and a, a, a better rebounder than you would expect him to be. Uh, a good veteran big, kind of at the same ilk of a Dorian Finney-Smith. Again, not expected to come in and be a game changer, but expected to be another good basketball player once it's time to uh, compete in the playoffs. So again, 39 overall, Conchar and Williams for Olenek. What do you think of that one, partner? Uh, Not Conchar as big of a fan. Be, look, because Kelly only is, is your guy. This is a guy that you, you've you've. He provides around. floor spacing, he does. and that's something that we could use. It, it, you're right. And, and you've talked about the shooting problems. I've talked extensively about the shooting problems. He is someone who could help in that area for sure. But – when I think about the 39th pick, here's the thing. We talk about is the ninth pick valuable or not. To me, the 39th pick is of decent value from the standpoint of anything in the top 40. This is just my general rule. You know, Everybody has their own. Top 40, I still consider first-round caliber players. You know, uh, you, You're going to have your 30 in the first round, but basically the next 10 picks are guys who all probably had late first round or early second round grades. And guys who probably are going to get guaranteed contracts, just like the first round guys. So uh, put it like this. Here's my thing. There are a couple guys in the second round that I really like. And, and, and we've talked extensively about the Grizzlies not having a big man there at number nine, right? I'm not opposed to the Grizzlies going out and getting a big man at 39 and then getting another veteran big in free agency and then just, you know, um, for a year and then that big at 39 – eventually becomes that big that you expected, you know, in the top 10. I think there are a couple names out there uh, that stand out to me. One is <laughs> Joe's, look, Joe's just going to love this. I mean, another G League Unite guy I got for you. Uh, but, but, but Joe, just to ease your, ease your concern a little bit. He, he's also, he, he's also from Spain, if that helps. <laughs> so Mark Gasol, Pal Gasol, Santi to a lesser degree, but, but another Spanish big man, potentially landing in, in Memphis. Uh, I, I'm going to mess up his name here, but uh, it's Izan Almanza. You know, the G League Ignite big. Six, I 10, like it. Seven, yeah, seven, mm -hmm. foot, uh, seven foot wingspan. But you, if you watch them, you know, with the Ignite, uh, he averaged over 10 points a game, over seven boards, and only played like 21, 21 minutes, but shot decently from the field. Has a three-point shot, but didn't shoot really well in that small sample size. Uh-huh. But my, my point is, here's my point. If you're telling me you could get a player of that talent level and say, hey, you know, let's start him out on a two-way contract, I think that's more valuable than bringing in Kelly Olenek. Because if I the, the reason I say that is the floor spacing big is nice. I, I, I completely agree with you. It, it is something on this team that needs to be better, which is why we'll talk more about Santi going forward. But mm. uh, Santi's got to be a better floor spacer, point blank, period. Like, that's his role, and he's not been great at it since he's been here. But – Kelly Olenek, without a doubt, we know he would be great in that role. The question I have, Joe, is, yes, he's a better rebounder than you give credit for, but he's another undersized big, which you talk about coming off the bench. you playing two undersized bigs with him and Brandon Clark. Uh, I'm not sold on that. I feel like this next big that you get needs to be this brute force, 6'11", shot blocker, rim runner type of guy who can kind of play off of Jaren a little bit more, and uh, that's just my thought process. That's the kind of big that I want more so than the Kelly Olenek. So if we're getting Kelly Olenek, I don't know if it's worth giving up John Conchar, but you you you, you definitely won't love that part. Uh, Zaire Williams, I can I can I can get jiggy with that. But you're telling me 39 and John Conchar, mm, I don't I don't know if it's worth it, Joe. I don't know. Fair enough. So you want a true big, so you want to draft a guy in Almansa who is one of the worst. He's the backup. He's the backup in the league. He shot twenty point six percent from three, and That's he small. only That's averaged point seven threes a game. He played in forty eight games for the G League Ignite. I didn't realize the G League Ignite had that many <laughs> make believe games. That's impressive. Good for them. Um. 
I, I hear what Shout you're out saying. Shout out to the G League Ignite. Uh, you, you, you could have them. Um, I, I just really struggle with the yeah. idea of a guy like that. I, I don't think that helps in the pursuit of a championship. And maybe that can be more of an existential conversation we have next week when we're back together, to Michael. Yeah. You know, uh, how intensely do you agree with my? Are you trying to win a championship or not? Because yeah. I think that there's people out there, and I'm not saying they're wrong. I disagree with them, but I think you can make an argument that maybe this isn't the time to go all in and you can. continue mm-hmm. to maintain flexibility. You have a roster that in theory should compete for the playoffs. If you have good health, roll the ball out and see what happens with what you've got. I think you can make that argument. You draft a couple of young guys, you develop replacements for Luke Kennard, develop replacements for Santi Aldama, maybe guys that you're not going to be able to afford to resign. I exactly again, maybe that's something we can talk about more next week let us know in the comments if you like my olenic trade demichael's not the only one to poo poo the olenic trade i need to be transparent here um, he's a good player couple, he's a good player but a couple of people also thought i was trading nine overall for kelly olenic which yeah, i that, most certainly yeah. would not do so I'm not that crazy. That, yeah. yeah um so again the trade was 39 conchar and williams for olenic what would make that better what's your thought process let us know in the comments on our next episode of locked on grizzlies it'll be a friday edition we'll be closing out the week the michael's gonna fly solo for that show and partner i'm sure you have plenty of things to discuss to take us into the weekend oh yeah i got some draft crushes out there and, and you know it, it, it's, you, and we've talked about all these different guys but I'm, I'm gonna go give a little bit more insight into which guys i really uh, like in this draft overall and then we can kind of make sense of, of their fits in memphis as well I enjoy that. I I, I like a good draft crush, so I'll be listening with great interest, and I'm sure our everydayers will be as well, which is hopefully you, dear listener, dear viewer. Hopefully you check out an episode of Lockdown Grizzlies each and every time it drops. It might be May. The Grizzlies may may not be playing basketball. They might still be on vacation in Cancun, a nice long extended stay. But DeMichael and I are working hard here throughout the month, like I alluded to earlier. There'll be a day or two coming up that we'll probably take off, but not yet. Not right now. You've got us going into next week for sure with a Friday episode with DeMichael coming up next on Locked on Grizzlies. Make sure you're liking, commenting, rating, reviewing, subscribing, wherever you get your podcasts, YouTube, Amazon, Apple, Spotify, anywhere you get a podcast, you can find us as proud members of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team each and every day. Make sure you're checking out Locked on NBA. Make sure you're checking out Locked on Sports Today on YouTube is also on Amazon as part of the Fire Free Channels app. For DeMichael, I am Joe. Have a great rest of your Thursday. Stay safe out there. Make sure you're tuning in on Friday for DeMichael's solo show about draft cover, uh, draft crushes. I'll be checking it out. You should be too. Have a good one.